Hi there, ghoulies. My name is Sokane, and I am your local vampire. Hi, and I am Sammy. You can call me whatever. So me, Sammy, demon, you know, you get it. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'm just whatever now. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're still Sammy. <laughs> you're only so me if we piss you off. Then she gets sassy. Exactly. <laughs> true, true. That's my, my other half. <laughs> I agree. There you go. I hope all you, I hope all your ghoulies, your week was great. Mm -hmm. Mine was like, you know, your average trying to push people out of the way and stuff for gifts and stuff in the store and fighting people. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> um, it was, it was good. It was just a normal week, work week, you know, doing normal things as everyday life stuff. Trying to get ready for Christmas, because that's just around the corner. I just felt like we just had Thanksgiving, and now all of a sudden it's Christmas. It's crazy. I know. that It is crazy. I will say, though, I'm excited this year. It's going to be a little different this year for the holidays, but I'm excited for it. I am the one making dinner and going to be hosting, so that's something to look forward to. Yeah, that'll be fun. And I just have to get everything in order. It takes a lot of, like, getting everything in order to get set up for Christmas. Mm -hmm. I know you usually spend your holidays with your family, right? Yep. And we split it between the two families. So it's like on Christmas Eve one year we spend with boyfriend's family. And then Christmas Day and Boxing Day we spend with the other family. And then we just go back and forth and we switch every year so that it's fair. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. That's one way to do it. I mean, we're trying I to I know, like, at times it, it used to be like complicated. That. Yeah, it can be. It can be, for sure. Yeah, I remember the couple of years before I had bought my house, it was kind of chaotic for me because we would have to try to, like, manage going to everybody's house to have, mm -hmm. like, Christmas. And it was just, like, too much traveling. And, like, usually it's, like, really snowing and stuff like that. So, like... I, that's why I'm happy this year that I get to do it. I get to host it and make dinner and everything. I know it'll be, like, exhausting afterwards, but at least I'm at home and I'm comfortable. So that's why I was like, yes, I will host because I want to be in my own comfort zone. Yeah, that's fair. So I wanted to ask, what do you think about Elf on the Shelf? <laughs> what do I think about Elf on the Shelf? Or what do they think about Elf on the Shelf? What do you think about Elf on the Shelf? Well, um, <laughs> let me tell you a small story and then <laughs> I'll tell you what I think about Elf on the Shelf. So when I worked okay. at Bass Pro Shops forever ago, I we had Elf on a shelf there. I'm really not sure why. I think it's just because the kids, like there was like a kids section of Bass Pro where you can get like kids fishing rods and whatever, right? So... <laughs> They had Elf on a Shelf with the little, like, book. I don't know if it still comes with a book. I have no idea. But it had a book that was, like, the story of the Elf on a Shelf and whatever. And I just remember, like, passing those things and being like, why? <laughs> like, I don't really have issues with dolls uh, or anything like that. But just looking at those things, I was like, I'm not really sure. Like, at first I was like, what is this? Like, what what is this used for? And then some of the older people I worked with are like, oh, right. you get it for, like, your kid. And then it's kind of like a, a scavenger hunter wherever where you, like, put it wherever you want. And then your kids find it and it, you you give them treats or, like, whatever. Like, it's it's just a fun, like, Christmassy activity for your kids to do during the month of December. And I was like, oh, okay, because I don't have kids. So, you know, I didn't know. I didn't know. I just saw this thing and I'm like, what? What is this thing? So, uh, I think it's, I mean, the red one, like how there's just like, the, there was just the one at this time. He was, he, he, she, I'm not really sure. I don't want to assume the elf's gender, but, uh, it, it was a little spooky. I'm like, I don't think I would want to look for that in the month of December. I think I would be like, no, thank you. I am good. Give me any other scavenger hunt, um, uh, but not that one. Yeah. I am not so thrilled about it. 
But if you know me well, I hate dolls. Like, I think they're so creepy. I just think the idea of it, of having a doll move around <laughs> in your house, is terrifying to me. And no, no, I, I think of the worst possible things. I'm like, this thing is going to be possessed. It's going to be watching me when I sleep. I'm like, yeah, it's not for me. I mean, if you like that stuff and you want Elf on the Shelf, you want Isabella, you want Tony, fine by me. There will be no Elf in my house. I will <laughs> stick to Santa Claus. Santa, old Saint Nick, is fine by me. I don't need his little helper. And if I see any of those little helpers, they're going right in the fireplace. No, thank you. No, I do elf not want them. You. I feel like they're cursed. <laughs> no, it's just like I feel like they're cursed. I don't know. I think every doll is cursed, but like I know my cousin is doing it for her daughter this year, and I the concept of is really cute. Like she's done really cute stuff with it, and her daughter's really enjoying it. But for me, like, that just won't be a tradition for me because I just find dolls creepy in general. But I'm not going to say that it's not cute what she's doing for her daughter because it is very nice of her to make, you know, Christmas special for her. But as somebody who has, like, a very big fear of dolls, yeah, no Isabella is going to be in my house tonight. So, <laughs> yeah. I, I, don't, I don't feel them let, like that. <laughs> That's totally fair. No way. Mm -mm. It's like having, it's like having your very own like Christmas Chucky, basically. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, you know, they're gonna be standing over me with a little knife and stuff. Like, hell no, hell to the no. Like, burn that shit, put it in a fire. Like, get rid of it, throw it in the garbage. No, no way, not for me. Uh -uh. <laughs> totally fair. <laughs> Dolls are creepy. But uh, the other string, yes, they are. They can be. But the other thing that I wanted to say, too, is my cousin was talking to me about something the other night. Her daughter had came downstairs. And, like, this is all the stuff that she's doing with Elf on the Shelf right now. But, like, you know, like the activities and stuff. Mm -hmm. But she said her daughter came downstairs because we were talking and I could hear her. She said her, like, bed was shaking. And oh. then she heard noises in her room. So, like, my cousin has been, like, super freaked out lately because she is also starting to hear stuff. And I'm like, see, that's Isabella. Oh, Isabella's shit. making her way around. You want to have Isabella there. You see why I don't want dolls in my house? You see why I don't like Elf on the Shelf? This is exactly why. When did this start happening? When Isabella made an appearance. Exactly. You should have listened to me. <laughs> yeah, should listen, listen to your cousin. <laughs> now you need an exorcist all over because Elf on the Shelf, you know? Like, yep. I mean, no. you never know what so, could be but, haunted. But on, <laughs> on this side note, I really do hope it's nothing serious because she is a little freaked out about it. Mm -hmm. and I said, you know what? With those things, just try to ignore it. And if it gets worse, then have somebody come bless your house. Because, mm -hmm. like, I know when they first moved there, they didn't have it blessed. I did um, have my house blessed when I moved into my house. Just because, like, you know, you don't know who really owned it beforehand. So I just, I, I come from, like, a religious background. So it was just more of a comfort thing for us to have our house blessed. So I told her, if you really do start feeling, like, really creeped out and things still continue to be happening, yeah, you know, have your house blessed. Maybe you'll feel better, you know, so... Yeah. You shall see. Yeah, it's definitely you shall see it's definitely what's fair. Happen. Hopefully hopefully everything's okay and that it's nothing too serious. I can understand like especially if you move into a house that other people have lived in before, I can understand why you would want to do something like that. I have never anywhere I've lived sure. I've never had anything like blessed or anything but that's just because i don't really think about it to be honest and also i would be a-okay living in a haunted house i'd be like yeah let's go demons <laughs> of course you would oh i know you would you'd be like hey you want to sleep with me in my bed demon it's okay we'll share scary stories together yeah i know you would <laughs> i'd be like demon come cuddle 
Yeah, exactly. Don't ask Soki to have a demon come in her house. She'll just invite it right in. Like, yeah, come on. Come on, you're more than welcome. Sure, have a seat next to me. Meet my cats. Here's Nala. Here's Aqua. <laughs> Yeah, hundred percent. I'd be like, beware of Aqua. She's a grumpy cat. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> well, I mean, the number one thing you ask when you buy a house, you know what it is, right? If somebody's died there. If it's haunted. Oh. Yeah. You I always want to know. Yeah. Like. Cause I mean, but would so. they tell you if it was haunted? I mean. Maybe they might say if you know the the people that lived there before if anybody passed away or something. Mm. I'm sure like they can disclose that. Like yeah, this family lived here, and I mean if the family lived there for a long time, I'm pretty sure there's gonna be people that have passed away if it's an older house, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure if when you buy a house or when you move in somewhere, they have to disclose to you if somebody's passed there. I think. Yes. It might be different in yes, different I think states so and too. stuff, but I think I don't know about here, but I've seen enough stuff from the states to know that there they have to. I don't know about anywhere else. But. Yeah, yeah, they do. They have to let you know just so that you're aware before buying the house. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I would want to know anyways. You know, if somebody had passed away. Yeah. It. It's just. I guess for me, it would be more of a comfort thing. To know, like, okay, this is the history of the house, so at least I'm prepared for, like, uh, you know, if a demon decides to make an appearance or something, or or Harry starts to pop by that passed away five years ago or ten years ago. Like, you know, yeah. I'm not surprised. So You know, or if Bill Wilkins any, wants to say hi. Yeah, any, any type of, like, apparition that mm -hmm. decides to make an appearance. Yeah, I don't know how happy I would be, but you know, I at least I would know that it's there mm -hmm. for sure. <laughs> so, ghoulies, let's ask Soki what our segment's gonna be about today. Well, I'm still gonna call it the under the bed segment because you know, we're spooky and creepy. But I thought today we could mm -hmm. talk about horror movies that we watched that actually scared us because if you guys know me. I watch horror movies nowadays, and I am not impressed. I don't go home scared. I don't have nightmares later. Um, and I know a lot of you are going to be like, what the hell, Soki? You want to have nightmares after a horror movie? Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> I watch horror movies to get scared. And from these two instances that I will tell you about, and Sammy will tell you about hers, aside from those two incidents, I don't get scared by horror movies like yeah okay i'm like a jump scared you know you get startled loud noises whatever but like i want to go home and be afraid to walk in my door because what if there's a demon behind it or like you know like i want to be a little bit scared like i don't want it to fuck me up for the rest of my life or nothing but <laughs> like i just i want to be scared and so i'm just very used to horror because that's why we're here. Hi, hello, I love horror, so to say. <laughs> so, you know, like, that's just yes. our thing. But I thought that it would be cool to share our experiences with horror movies, if any scared us, and kind of, like, what happened. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think nowadays it's more of how, what's the word for it? Like, it's the way they're making horror movies is not the same as like back in the day those like it's not like back in the day i was after watching a horror movie i would be scared to get up and and like go in the dark or more it's just like real life type situations happening which is okay too like i can understand that but it's more like if anybody's seen, I think it's called Midsummer or something like that. I don't know if I'm saying it right. But those kind of, like, scary movies don't really get me. Like, it's just kind of like, oh. Unlike The Exorcist, The Poker Guys. Like, those movies are chilling. Those are movies that are like, okay, I want to, you know, pray to Jesus right now and make sure he saves my soul after watching this movie. I remember I was about, I think, like, 14 years old, and I was watching with my cousin. We were having a sleepover, 
and they wanted to watch The Exorcist. And like I said, we're big people on faith. By me being like religious, like that's like I was scared to watch that movie because obviously it's talking about possession, devil, you know, all that great stuff. We watched it that night together and I was absolutely terrified after the movie because I thought, you know, I was going to be possessed by the demon when I went to bed tonight or something was going to be shaking my bed when I went to sleep. Well, there's a story to that that happened to me that, that same night. Well, I got scared and I was too scared to stay over at my cousin's house, but I live right downstairs from her. So we lived in an apartment building, so I could just go right downstairs back to my house if I was scared. And I was too scared to stay the night after watching that movie. So my sister was home and my parents were home. I was about to go to bed. Well, my sister was going through a really hard time during then. She had seizures and stuff. Like she has epilepsy because her blood sugar would drop really low and it would cause her to have a seizure. Well, that night she had a seizure, a really, really bad one. And I thought she was possessed. And the only thing that I could do is I froze in place, threw the covers over my head, and screamed for my mom and dad to come and help me because I thought Satan was coming to take my soul. And it, the scream was bloody murder, and my parents came running in there, and then I remember them saying, like, she's possessed, she's possessed. And my mom was like, stop freaking out. Everything is okay. Your sister was having a seizure. But forever in my mind, it will stick in my head because I thought I was going to be taken to hell by a demon because of watching The Exorcist. You know what I mean? Because it was just, it's one of those movies that just really, really scared me. And I'll always associate that with that. And because of how everything happened but it's just one of those good creepy movies that make you like want to pray after like for me anyways like I wanted to be like okay um yeah I need to go to church next day after watching this movie <laughs> because I was scared to death I didn't know how it is for you but movies like that are the ones that really get me it it's like it's close to home with things like that with my faith mm-hmm for me i they i don't know it sometimes they get to me and sometimes they don't it's more for me stuff like the ring you know the story but i don't know who that watches the podcast does so i'm gonna retell it <laughs> but my story has to do with the ring so i was sleeping over at my best friend's house at the at the time her mom was at work she worked at a bar or something and her older brother who was i don't know like a few years older than us was like babysitting us if you will but we were like i was 12 so she was probably 11 something like that you know we weren't old enough to technically be our by ourselves but we were old enough that we didn't really need a babysitter. So he was chilling in his room. And me, as a human, vampire, whatever you want to call me. <laughs> when I was little, even up till now, I, I horror is just my thing. I love horror. It's, you know, it's just part of who I am. And so we decided we wanted to watch a, a scary movie. And so we chose The Ring. And I don't think it was on TV. I think it was like a VHS. That tells you how old I am. And <laughs> so we, I remember we were flipping through channels and I don't remember why, but like the Japanese, the grudge, so like Juwan was on. And I just saw the part where the kid with the cat, if you guys haven't seen that movie, uh, spoilers, but uh, something to do with like, kid turning into a cat and i was very confused with my life and i was like all right what was that that was weird and then we watched the ring and i think what really screwed me up was her mom would call us every once in a while and make sure everything was going okay and like ask talk to her brother to make sure he was still there and didn't like sneak out or whatever and so we were watching the ring and it got to the part where rachel is watching the tape and then her phone rings and as soon as the tape ended and Rachel's phone rang our phone rang and I was like oh my god we're gonna die like we just watched this tape 
the movie's gonna kill us we're gonna die my friend is like laughing because she's like it's my mom but she did the thing the same thing as uh the girls in the movie where they're having a sleepover and the one picks up the phone it wasn't i picked up the phone she picked up her own phone but she like looked at me all scared and i was like what like who is it and she's like it's just my mom like it's fine and i was like oh my god don't scare me that's terrifying rude so whatever we watched the rest of the movie that part really freaked me out and then we went like whatever we did whatever we did the rest of our little sleepover and then we went to bed and i was on a foamy thingy it was literally i think that's what they used to call them i don't even know if they still exist anymore but a bed on the ground and she was obviously sleeping in her bed and we fell asleep watching happy stuff on teletoon because that was when you know shows went offline and teletoon was still a channel i don't know if it still is but i know that that's what we were watching watching just like you know cartoons or whatever and we fell asleep and when we woke up uh the tv we were watching it on was one of the little tvs with a, like a vcr attached to it and we well i woke up just randomly in the middle of the night and i looked over at the tv and it had the snow like you see in the ring like the staticky gross shit going on oh no and i was like oh my god so of course i was already terrified because the phone rang when the phone rang in the movie and i was like convinced that we were going to die now this is happening and i'm trying to wake up my friend and she's like dead to the world like she's dead asleep so i got so scared that i got up and i turned off the tv i took the remotes out of the sorry the battery out of the remote um i took that tv i unplugged it and i put it in her closet because it was right next to where her closet was then I put the batteries and the remote in the closet. I shut the closet door and I put a chair against it so that the demons could not come out of the closet and get me. Uh, and then I proceeded to curl up as close to the wall that I was sleeping on as possible because that was as far away from the closet as I could possibly get. And then I went to sleep somehow. And when I woke up in the morning, my friend was like, where'd my TV go? And I was like, well, you see, um, I thought we were going to die. So <laughs> it's in your closet. And she's like, what? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the ring for some reason, just I think I think it's literally just because I was a child. Uh, the phone rang at the same time as in the movie right after she had watched the tape and she got the seven days thing so i think like just because of those series of coincidences my poor 12 year old brain was like samara is gonna come out of the well from god knows where and murder my face because i watched this tape and it wasn't even my choice i didn't want to watch it <laughs> like i just i was <laughs> freaking out and so for a very long time that movie scared me and i would watch it again and again and again because that's just who i am but uh yeah it, it, it scared me a lot yeah i mean i feel like a lot of movies back then were really good mm -hmm. like have the scare factor but like i'm a type of person who loves a good slasher movie like i like texas chainsaw massacre the original fantastic movie like Fantastic gore, fantastic weird, I don't know what you want to call it, inbred hillbilly family. <laughs> like, you know, they were just, it was just a really, really well done movie. And you could tell there was not like a lot of money behind it, but it was just really well developed. Like so many people still watch it today. I just feel like nowadays you don't get that same type of quality. I'm not going to say that all the movies were bad. Because I will say my favorite movie from this year would have to be The Nun 2. The Nun 2 was so well done. I really enjoyed it. It got me a couple times with the jump scares. And who wouldn't be afraid of Valak? I know I wouldn't want Valak in my damn closet or something. No, thank you. You know, lurking in the corner or something. Mm -mm. So I just, I just feel like maybe I'm a little too harsh because like... I love horror so much. I just, I'm an enthusiast, so I want to see great horror movies, and I just don't see a lot of that being done nowadays. But, 
you know, there's always hope for the future that movies are going to be done with well quality. It's going to be having that scare factor. But for me, this year was The Nun 2. What was your favorite movie for this year, if you have one? I think Insidious the Red Door was my favorite because it actually oh, got yes, me that was a good one. to physically gasp in the theater. Like, I am not one... Like I said before, you know, I get jump scared sometimes. It happens when you hear loud noises. It startles you. There's days where you're just extra jumpy, whatever. And yeah, I don't know, exactly. for whatever reason, uh, like, I was good. I was comfortable. I was like, heck yeah, insidious. Like, let's go. And I was good. And a lot of the jump scares didn't get me. And I can't even remember what it was because Sammy and I rewatched it just recently. And I still don't remember what it was, but I went to go put a piece of popcorn in my mouth and whatever it was scared me to the point that I literally like had my mouth open as I was putting popcorn in my mouth and went, <gasps> <laughs> and that doesn't happen oh, very no. often. So it was really, I didn't choke. Everything was fine, but I'm just actually really happy that a horror movie got me to do that, especially like one that's recently. Because I know for me, like I said, Insidious was really good. I did like The Nun too. It didn't really scare me, but I liked the story. Whatever. But it's even just like I'm the same where I feel like I'm too harsh on movies. Because I remember the year that The Boy, The Forest, and Krampus all came out. I think in this, in like not that long from each other i could be wrong so if i'm wrong i'm sorry but i remember that was the year that i was like i'm giving up on horror movies because they're just not scary i thought the boy was dumb if you don't like dolls you probably thought that movie was scary but i thought it was dumb the forest i thought was interesting i just didn't like how they ended it and krampus i literally was like if that thing walked up to me i'd be like what's up bro like <laughs> that wouldn't scare me you know so I think that definitely the one that I have seen the most recently that was the best in my opinion was Insidious the Red Door, but I don't know if I'm biased because it actually made me go like, <gasps> like, oh my god, or if it's just because I like the story and I like that they brought the original family back and stuff, but yeah, that one was, that one was my favorite of the year so far. I think for me, an underrated, really good scary movie is The Possession. I think that movie was a really good scary movie as well. Then again, it's going through like the same theme of being possessed, but what the child was going through and the divot trying to take over her, like basically like, you know, kill her. It was just, it was very scary. And like the one scene where you can actually see it inside her, oh, it was very creepy. I was mm -hmm. like, okay, yeah, get this thing out of her, please, God, whatever, holy water, get this thing out of her body. But it, it just had that scare factor, and that's what I want. I want to be scared. When I'm leaving, I want to be able to think of that movie and be like, wow, that really got me. Like, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm literally legit scared now to sleep at night. It, it's just, it's not happening right now for horror, but... I mean, there was a few good movies this year that did come out that had, like I said, like, The Nun 2, The Insidious, The Red Door was really good. That's probably the best two that I had seen for this year. I can't really think of anything else. I know I did enjoy Cobweb. It wasn't too bad with his sister living inside the wall. Mm. That mm -hmm. was pretty creepy. Sorry for any spoilers, but <laughs> that wasn't such a bad movie. Mm -hmm. The Boogeyman. The Boogeyman was all right. Oh, yeah, it wasn't was okay. too bad either. Yeah, that one wasn't too bad. I, that one was okay. Yeah. I mean, it was okay. Yeah. It was all right. It wasn't like terrifying, but it was, it was pretty good. If you're scared of the dark, mm. I think that would be a really good movie to scare you. Like if yeah. you're afraid of like... I know there's a lot of people that are, I used to be scared of the dark for the longest time. Like, I would make sure, like, my closet door was shut. Like, everything, every black surface that you could cover or anything that had space, I would literally try to cover it so that there would, I would feel, like, safe or, like, nothing could get me. Even to this day, like, I'm weird like that. I have to have my closet closed and I have to sleep with my door closed. That's fair. <laughs> I'm that's a weirdo. <laughs> nah, that's not weird. Sometimes I look at closet doors when I'm going to bed and I'm like, I'm just going to shut you now. 
Mm -hmm. and mirrors mirrors are so creepy mm. oh there was a really good movie was it called mirrors there is one called mirrors that movie was a really good movie too I... if i'm thinking of the same movie i feel like i've seen that one maybe yeah it's the one where he's working as a security guard right he's like separated from his wife and then there's the mirror, and then he starts, like, seeing things that are happening and ends up killing his sister. And it's just, that was really scary, too. Because, like, how are you supposed to get away from anything that has, like, a reflection, right? Yeah, Even, true. like, when I get up and do stuff, I'm like, oh, I don't like looking at mirrors at night. It's <laughs> yeah. like, mm -mm. Creepy. No, thank you. Well, supposedly, mm -hmm. if you have mirrors facing the same direct like facing each other it creates like a spiritual portal for things to come through uh they call it like a, a vortex i want to say or maybe it is Jesus just a Christ. portal i don't know i watch a lot of haunted stuff on youtube and supposedly if you have a mirror like two mirrors facing each other in like the same room or whatever that it creates some sort of something and spirits can come through it, and that's why places... Like an open way. Yeah. Like a passage. Yeah, it's kind of like why oh, hotels, okay. like certain hotels, are like super haunted. Great. Now I'm going to be checking my house to make <laughs> sure no mirrors are facing each other tonight. Because now I'm going to be thinking that I'm going to open a portal to the freaking demon world or the spirit realm. Thank you, Soki. I appreciate it so much. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to freak you it's out. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, it's funny that you say the thing that you're saying about dolls and how you don't like dolls because literally last night mm -hmm. I was talking to the boyfriend about horror movies and stuff and I can't remember what movie we were talking about or what, what it is we were talking about. He's like, what is it with horror movies and dolls? And I said, well, lots of people don't like dolls. So, you know, the corporations yeah. that make these, they profit off of that because they know people don't like dolls. That's why they made the Annabelle movies, which uh, I, I do have a, a short story that goes with the first one. But I feel like that's why they made the Annabelle movies. And also because she's based off of the actual Annabelle uh, who is a Raggedy oh, Ann doll, yeah. and not that scary. I mean, I would probably shake her hand if I was allowed to touch her, but <laughs> you're not supposed to do that, so... Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, um, I also think it'd be cool to go see Robert the doll, because, uh, yeah, but also I wouldn't want to get murdered. Supposedly, if you take his picture and you don't ask permission first, uh, he curses you. So, you know, that's... Maybe we should just do a okay, whole episode ghoulies. on dolls. <laughs> we need to keep Soki away from anything demon related, okay? We just need to keep her away from it. She wants to take it home and cuddle it and love it and keep it for, you know, good luck. No, we need to keep you away from those things, okay? You are not allowed to go and see Robert. You are not allowed to have an Annabelle. No. Damn it. No. That's it. It's not happening. What if I go to the store and now, buy myself a Raggedy Ann and name her Annabelle? Is that allowed? I mean, I guess. I mean, <laughs> she doesn't have an evil spirit in her, so yeah, I guess. Exactly. I think it's just the idea for me, the reason why I don't like like dolls is the way they stare like they just have that mm. blank like just you know it's just like looking into the abyss and it's just chilling for me i'm just like i'm always afraid like it's gonna like turn its head slowly i've watched <laughs> way too much horror to not like think like something's gonna happen like with dolls or something or anything so i'm always like okay yeah is this doll gonna murder me in my sleep tonight my mom has a big collection of dolls and she's like oh yeah sam when i pass away you can have all my dolls that i have and i was thinking to myself though i love you so much mom i will not be taking those dolls <laughs> I will happily keep them in storage for the rest of my life, but they will not be living in my home. No, 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 no. And she has a big collection. And I remember in our household, she would have them, like, all placed around the house and stuff. And during the night, I would never want to get up because 
they just all looked like they were staring at me. They like were plotting my death. I just felt like all of them were plotting what they were gonna do to me. Like I was gonna wake up one day, be laying on the floor, and they're all were gonna be in a circle surrounding me, doing like some voodoo shit on me or something. Like I hated those dolls. Like I was so happy when I moved out on my own and I did not have to look at those creepy dolls anymore. <laughs> So as you can see, Goonies. No, no, I will not be keeping those dolls. <laughs> Tammy does not like dolls. No. I don't think they're that scary. It really mm, depends. No. Like, I feel like if the real Annabelle looked like the Annabelle in the movies, I would still want to take her home with me. However, I will say that I did go see the Annabelle movie, like the first one that's just called Annabelle, uh, in theaters. And um, spoiler alert, if you guys haven't seen it, I hope that you all have, if you're horror enthusiast by now, unless you just really don't like dolls. Um, but spoiler alert, basically there's a part where the demon that is possessing Annabelle's name is Malthus. There's a whole, like, you can look the lore up and stuff on him if you like. But basically, Annabelle herself isn't technically possessed. They're just, the demon's just using her as a conduit to get to the people because most people that aren't afraid of dolls, like dolls, they think they're cute, like, whatever, right? So, in this case, mm -hmm. there's a part where I can't even remember exactly what's happening, but I know that she goes down into the basement to get something, and the, the elevator's not working, and she's pressing the button to go upstairs, and it's not, the door's not closing, like, nothing's working for her, and then you just see a baby carriage roll out, and you see the demon standing there, and you can't really see him, you just see glowing eyes, and I'm like, alright, you know, that's kind of spooky, like, whatever. And then the doors close and it jumps at her and doesn't get her. And then she's freaking out because she's got a flashlight and all the power's off or whatever. Something happened. She's got a flashlight. She's in the, like, hallway of her apartment building. And she's running up the stairs. And the demon's on the stairs. And it's all, like, growling at her. And she's dropped her flashlight. And it's shining on the demon. And she's like, oh, my God. And she runs away. So there you go. That's a brief summary of what happens in the movie. So you can understand what's about to happen next. So... When I lived with my ex, yes, when I lived with my ex, we lived in a house, in a, in a house, but the basement was a suite and the upstairs was a suite. So there was people living upstairs and then there was us that lived downstairs. And to get to my door, to get into where I actually lived was stairs. You had to go in the side door, down the stairs, and the only way you could turn on the light for the stairs was at my door so i had to go down dark stairs to turn on the light and i had just seen this movie why annabelle is another one of my favorites because i went down those stairs going holy shit i'm gonna die and as soon as i i got halfway down the stairs and the dog upstairs started barking because she barked at everything at one point she did become my dog and she still barked at everything and she scared the bejesus out of me and I was like, holy shit, the demons are coming, like, here, here's the day that I die, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna die on the stairs to a demon that I can't see, can't wait, and so I got into my apartment, if that's what you want to call it, I, uh, I finished, you know, I turned on all the lights everywhere, my boyfriend was not home because he was working overnights that night, so I was stuck by myself in my apartment with all the lights on and I went to bed with all the lights on because I was like ain't no demon gonna come in the form of a doll to eat my face and that is what I look for in horror movies I want to go home and be scared to go down the stairs or to be scared to go in the bathroom or whatever kind of like my aunt when she saw what lies beneath she was afraid to go to the bathroom <laughs> for a little while after that she was like afraid of bathtubs for a bit because that movie scared her and like that's what i want from my horror movies horror movie producers directors developers whatever the hell you want to call it yourselves people that make the horror movies give me that that is what i want i yeah. want to leave watch the theater and be scared yeah watch the shining if you want to be scared of bathtubs there's a scene in there <laughs> for the bathroom you will not want to go to the bathroom anymore after watching that scene what comes out of it great <laughs> Mm -hmm. can't wait Gary. yeah that's something we'll have to watch together because i have never seen it <laughs> yes we will it's pretty good it i really like the shining it's a classic like i said the classics are the good ones and that's another thing with movies too like with horror movies 
I feel like, you know, the first one and then maybe the sequel, it's good. But then when you keep on dragging it on, it just it doesn't get it's not good anymore. So for me, I'm kind of one of those people where like it has to be the original movie. And then like when they make like a remake, I'm usually disappointed because it's not really that good. You know, Mm -hmm. for instance, the Exorcist movie that I was talking about, I watched the remake this year. It didn't even scare me. Like, Mm -hmm. I was just like, oh, okay, these girls are possessed by the demon and unfortunately takes a tragic toll. But it didn't give me the scare factor like the original. And it was because of, like, the atmosphere, the way they had in the original movie, the special effects. And you would think, like, well, today's, like, special effects is way better. But it, it's the way they had everything set up. It was the music behind it. Like, that music to this day, when I hear that music going, dee, 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 I'm like, nope. I do not want to hear that music. Turn that off. Nope. It's just, that's what I want from those kind of movies. So please, directors, anybody who's making movies, screenwriters, whatever you're doing, please give me some of that. That's what I want. That's what I need. That's what I strive for. Yeah. Atmosphere can do atmosphere can do so much. Like even in horror games, when you have an atmosphere, yeah, the ambience, yeah, then then it it makes people uncomfortable. It makes people spooked. So then, even if you do throw in a jump scare or whatever, it doesn't feel cheap or it doesn't feel silly or whatever because it it Mm -hmm. you're already spooked. And like that's the thing. Sure, exactly. Special effects and stuff might be better nowadays for sure. But it's the way that they use it. They have to use it in a way that is going to be spooky. And obviously, everyone is different. Like, I know so many people that said that, you know, like, some horror movies I've seen this year were so scary and that they had nightmares or whatever. So it's like, I get it. I understand that you have to cater to a lot of people and everybody's different. And I totally get it. But, like, come on, guys. Make some movies for me and Sammy where we want to go home and we want to be scared and we want to like you know have that fear in us for a little while and be like oh my god that pray was a million scary. times before we go to sleep yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. exactly pray a million times before i go to sleep mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm like that's I all agree. i want exactly just scare me just mm-hmm. a little just bit scare me just a little bit just don't just don't send me any dolls and i'll be okay <laughs> yeah don't give her right? dolls don't i don't want any dolls, dolls for christmas <laughs> no no dolls for christmas okay that's i don't want any please don't send me anything no dolls for christmas <laughs> no dolls no elf on a shelf for sammy <laughs> no no i mean if that's your thing sure just not for me <laughs> totally fair <laughs> is there anything else you would like to share or no, i think those are my only two stories i have for like horror movies that actually freaked me out the ring is the the famous one that freaks me out and still even to this day sometimes like i i don't know it like puts a puts a fear in me i remember the second one i really liked and then the third the th- there's three right the third one I had a very hard time taking seriously because, A, I know I'm typecasting, nobody yell at me, but the person that plays the professor in Rings is the guy that plays Leonard in The Big Bang Theory, and I know him from something funny, so I can't, like, his acting was impeccable, it has nothing to do with him, it's just I know him as Leonard, so I can only picture him as Leonard, that's a me problem, but you know like people typecast people all the time it's just like the kid that played joffrey in game of thrones can't really get any more work because everyone hated him so much and you know Mm -hmm. but yeah it happens yeah so it's like it's one of those things where the second one i thought was okay but it didn't really scare me like there was a bit of possession up in there too but not the same kind And then the third one was just really weird, and I see where they were going with it, because that is kind of what you're supposed to do. Like, it did follow the storyline of how Samara likes things and such, but I I don't know. I didn't really think that it was scary. But then again, that's just me. (laughs) Maybe people have PTSD. 
from VHS tapes now. I don't know. Well, I definitely would like your opinions on how you feel about Scary Movies Bullies. Like, hmm. I would like to know how you feel and what movies, and if you have any suggestions of maybe movies that I haven't seen and that you think that are really good scares, please feel free to write that in the comments. I would love to sit there and uh, watch a good scary movie I haven't seen. I'm pretty sure I haven't seen everything, so any suggestions would be great. Yeah, I'd but, be down to. Yeah, I mean, it's always good to have, like, extra, like, stuff to watch. Mm -hmm. I know sometimes I like watching my little shows, but I wouldn't mind to watch a scary movie that I hadn't seen before. So Same here. if you guys know any good movies, please feel free to write that in the comment and suggest anything. Mm -hmm. But I think it's about time for us to go, ghoulies, once again. I must lurk back and... into the darkness. I know, we're gonna like creep our ways back into the darkness, <laughs> but like we always say, you know, close your doors and lock them. And don't forget to check your closets and close those doors too, and check under the bed. Until we meet again, because you never know what's lurking in the dark. <laughs> Bye my ghoulies, Bye. until next time.